And so, I want to ask you, is knowing God your great desire? Luke 5, 16, where we see that Jesus would often withdraw to the desert to pray. Even Jesus had a quiet time. In Psalm 46, 10, he says, be still and know that I am God. In Matthew 11:28, 28, Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God's greatest delight is that you know Him. And knowing Him is what brings ultimate enjoyment and fulfillment in life. I love opening the Word of God and finding out what is true and right and pure and holy. My quiet time is the most important part of my day. And so, dear friend, my prayer is that you dedicate yourself to God in quiet time each and every day of your life. Hi, I'm Katherine Martin, founder of Quiet Time Ministries, and I would like to take you on a brief journey to answer the question, what is a quiet time. First, why is quiet time so important? And what is the biblical basis for quiet time with the Lord? First century Greek philosophy held that their God belonged to a realm of being where a person could have no direct contact with this world. Those who held to this philosophy also believed that their God had no emotions or feelings. And that's what much of the world believes today. You can't pray to God because God's too busy. Have you ever felt that way about God? The marvelous truth about God, and we learn about Him in the Bible, is that He is not a faraway, distant God, but one who is drawn near to you. Jesus, who is God in the flesh, and the exact representation of God, entered the time space dimension of this world. The God of the universe became man and dwelt among men. And this same God desires more than anything else to have constant fellowship and companionship with you. He longs to be involved in your world, your relationships, your job, your family, your friends, your feelings, your dreams, and your desires. God says in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in these I delight. This is God's great invitation to draw near and know him to converse and fellowship with Him, and to enter into the great discussion with Him as you read His Word. The Bible encourages us that God may be known and experienced firsthand. Abraham was a friend of God. Enoch walked with God. Moses spoke with God face to face. David was called a man after God's own heart. When Moses expressed his great desire to know God, God replied by saying, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. God's greatest delight is that you know Him. And knowing Him is what brings ultimate enjoyment and fulfillment in life. And so, I want to ask you, is knowing God your great desire? To know Him requires a time of solitude and rest to draw near to God in prayer and study of His Word. This time is called your quiet time.
Even Jesus had a quiet time. Luke tells us that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And so, dear friend, my prayer is that you dedicate yourself to God in quiet time each and every day of your life. Now, why am I so passionate about quiet time with the Lord and devotion to God? Well, just the title of this ministry reveals the passion of my heart. Quiet time, alone with God in His Word. I'm passionate about it because God is passionate about it. Now, how do I know? Well, because God talks about our devotion to Him and our time with Him throughout the Bible, which is His Word. Listen to what He says. In Psalm 46.10, He says, Be still and know that I am God. Again, his words in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, he says, Let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me, for I delight in these things. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In John 7, 37, Jesus says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. In Revelation 3, 20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door. I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. In all of these words, I hear the heart. I hear the thoughts. I hear the emotion of a God who is interested and greatly passionate about spending time with me. And that's what quiet time really is spending time with God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the CEO of the universe. I'm intensely passionate about spending time with my Lord because He's greatly passionate about spending time with me. In fact, from His words in the Bible, I discover that He loves me. In Jeremiah 31.3, He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And then the great words in John 3, 16, God so loved the world. God loves me. And not only do I discover that God wants to spend time with me and that he loves me, but I also learn that my time with him as I read the Bible and talk with him will transform my life. And that leads me to this. I'm passionate about quiet time because I know it's going to make the difference in who I am, the life I live, and where I'll be in one year, five years, 10 years, even 20 years. You know, I often say, time is short, eternity is forever. And you know, you can live your life many ways. Your character can reflect many things. Wouldn't you like to be the person that God has in mind for you to be? Did you know that God actually has a purpose for your life? Listen to these words. Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. And so the question is, how can you become the person God wants you to be? Quiet time with Him, my friend. All that is wrapped up in quiet time, studying His Word, talking with Him, yielding to Him as He works in your life, it all happens in your quiet time with Him. That's why Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. And then he went on to say in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Paul encourages us in Romans 12, 2 by saying, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And that word for transformed is metamorphuste. And it's where we get our English word metamorphosis. And do you know what it means? It means an inward and complete change. Friends, for you and for me, it means a new life. The Lord wants to renew you and me daily and completely change us from the inside out. How does he do it? By renewing our mind. And that's what happens in quiet time. In your quiet time, the Lord changes the way you think by showing you what is true in his word. And I'm going to tell you something. I love opening the word of God and finding out what is true and right and pure and holy. There's nothing worse than putting your faith in something that has absolutely no substance or truth to it. Have you ever done that? I know I have. I've trusted what someone has said only to find out later they had no intention of carrying out what they promised. The wonderful thing is that God can be trusted. What he says is true. What he promises, he will do. You can count on it. And so, as you read and study his word, you will learn about who God is and what he does. You will learn his promises. And as you learn to trust him, You will have a hope and a peace and a contentment that nothing in this world can touch. It's my heart's desire that you experience God for yourself, that you will open the pages of the Bible day by day and live there and hear him speak to you. Your life will be transformed and you will be an incredible light and influence in the lives of those around you. And what is the result? of quiet time with the Lord, your actions and behavior in life will be characterized by wisdom. You will find that you have a place of refuge, a shelter in the storms of life. You will experience a peace, a contentment, a satisfaction that is independent of feelings and circumstances. You will know God as the living God. You will begin to look at events and people through God's eyes and from his perspective. You will have a sense of purpose, meaning, and direction in life as God works in and through you to change the world. You will appreciate the you that God has designed. You will be renewed and receive life for a new day. You will find rest for your soul and you will experience a peace that will enable you to endure the difficulties of life. You will experience clarity in the circumstances of your life. You will see and experience the kingdom of God and you will gain strength to say no to sin and you will experience a life of holiness. You will shine with the light of Jesus in the world and you will apply the benefits of God's promises to your life. You will find that the joy of the Lord is your strength and you will become a man or woman after God's own heart. Now, those are just a few of the thousands of things that will happen when you spend time alone with God. And there are numerous resources to help you grow in your intimate relationship with God and in your quiet time with Him. If you would like some direction in getting started in quiet time, I highly recommend that you take the 30-day journey of six secrets to a powerful quiet time. This journey will revolutionize the way you spend time with God. So, what is a quiet time? Well, a quiet time is more than a Bible study. It's more than a devotional. It's quiet time. Quiet times, as I've designed in the Quiet Time Notebook and written them in the Quiet Times for the Heart series and the A Quiet Time Experience series, are based on the P-R-A-Y-E-R Quiet Time Plan introduced in Six Secrets. P-R-A-Y-E-R is 
prepare your heart, read and study God's Word, adore God in prayer, yield yourself to God, enjoy His presence, and rest in in His love. You can discover how to organize your quiet time with the devotional disciplines of the P-R-A-Y-E-R Quiet Time Plan through devotional reading, Bible study, hymns and worship, meditation, word studies, journaling, prayers, and application of God's Word to your life. And you might even want to get the Six Secrets DVD and watch the six messages to encourage you on your 30-day journey of Six Secrets. Then continue by going on the 30-day journey of knowing and loving the Bible, where you will learn how to be face-to-face with God in His Word on a daily basis in your devotional life. I want to encourage you to sign up online for the Quiet Time Ministries email newsletter. We'll keep you up to date on all things quiet time. And finally, I invite you to join me as a QTM partner in Quiet Time Ministries. We count on quiet time partners like you through prayerful donations. Paul said, not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit, which increases to your account. And that's Philippians 4 verse 17. Dear friend, I encourage you to take the time to invest in your relationship with the Lord. Learn and grow in your quiet time with Him. It will pay in spiritual dividends and you will become what I like to call a spiritual multi-millionaire. You will be laying up treasure in heaven that nothing on earth can touch. Always remember the words, of 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that He may strongly support those whose heart is completely His. Oh, may His eyes rest on you and me. It's been said that the world has yet to see what God can do in and through those whose hearts are wholly His. God bless you as you continue on in this great adventure of knowing Him.